there's something I wanted to talk about outside of that. When I said going into the political wilderness, you know, it, it brings back to something that uh, that Chris had just said, like Syriza in, in Greece. Or is that in Spain? Fact check me on that. But one of that basically they were a fringe party 10 years and then 10 years later, they became a major party. And now they control the government. You know, that just goes to show you. And I know our institutions are different and the way things work are different. But that just goes to show you that if you support the fringe candidates, their type of politics will become mainstream over time. You just have to support them. And, and I think, you know, when you have people who are so-called progressives, and now I'm going to come at the media, I'm going to come at them specifically, TYT, the Majority Report, um, who else? Tom Hartman, big time, big time. And, and even like a lot of our intellectuals in, in, in academia, you know, we have Eddie Glaude and, and Adolph Reed, they'll, they'll basically give you a long history lesson and all the different things that have happened and how they happened and what the history behind this is or what really happened behind that. And they have a deep analysis and is all of it's hugely prescient, right? And then at the very end, they'll say, but you need to maintain the duopoly. You need to continue to, to vote for, you know, one of the two candidates and, and you can fight and you can fight it out later. And it's just like, well, all, all of what you told me lends itself to a completely different conclusion. I would, I would even argue that Bernie Sanders did the same thing. You know, he gets up here and he, he basically pounds the pavement on his positions and what he would like to see. And then when the power structure really leaned in on him, what did he do? He bends his head, he bows his head and bends the knee. And it's just like, why did you do that? And he will say, well, I need to accomplish whatever I can. It's like, well, maybe you should have just stood on your principle. And if you lose today, that's okay. You can come back later on, but he couldn't do that. And, and, and based off of what I've seen, that's also why I wonder about these progressives like Elizabeth Warren, you know, they're progressive when it really doesn't mean much, but when it comes down to fighting, when the power structure really comes after you, when the corporations are all aligned against you and all you have are your supporters, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand on your principle and fight for what you believe in? Or are you going to bow the head and defer the fight to later? Because when you do that, basically what you're saying is you're not ready to fight until the battle's won or until a, the fight is, you know, in your favor mean much. and you can just win straight out when the power structure or really comes to the fight just really doesn't even matter anymore. Because you you're fighting about something small when there's greater, greater things to be fighting about. Um, now, I did see somebody made a comment there that Eddie Glaude uh, basically uh, supports the blank out strategy. Let me let me explain to you what the blank out strategy amounts to, my, or at least my interpretation on it is. You can show your dissatisfaction for Democrats only when it doesn't matter to them and, and you know, has no chance of costing them an election. What that amounts to is you can challenge the status quo only when it doesn't matter. You can break the system. Well, I'm sorry, you can only do stuff outside the norm if it doesn't really affect the system. So basically, when it when it matters, you're always supposed to bow down. But when it doesn't matter, you know, show your dissatisfaction. And you know what? They probably like that strategy because it doesn't threaten anything to them. They say, oh, okay, well, you know, hey, you know, we're still good for this election. And you know, next time we'll do some other propaganda and you guys will be stuck voting for us again. Thanks. That's literally what they're thinking. And that's why I never really agreed to a blank out strategy. Now, you can argue that, you know, an electoral loss will lead to pain, but this is pain or bad policy that is already in the works that cannot be averted without breaking the system. But somehow we're supposed to fall in line and not try to break the system because when we try to break the system, we could lose. But you're going to lose anyway, because you're inside a system that's losing. And there's no trajectory out outside of moving outside of it. At the very minimum, we should be supporting the fringe parties to, as an attempt to exercise more control over the mainstream parties. But even that is, you know, not, I don't know, it's something that you can only do if it doesn't threaten anything. 
you know, I, I think at this point, like I said, you can't win if you don't play. This idea that you can only do stuff when it doesn't threaten anything is just not helpful. It, I mean, even the least worst argument altogether is not helpful. You know, at this point, we should be talking about what can we do to actually change stuff. And, you know, I can go on and on and on, but I remember Angela Davis, you know, just recently made a comment and I thought that was, you know, almost indicative of what we're talking about here. You'll have the easy rudites get up there and they'll give us a history lesson and everything will be on point. And at the very end, they'll fall in and support the status quo. And they'll say, well, you know, voting for the status quo is not really supporting it. Actually, it is because the status quo only needs your vote to continue. It does not need anything from you but your consent in the form of a vote to continue the way it is. Now, if you're talking about basically everybody getting out in the streets and protesting and basically shutting the country down like they do in Europe, that's a different story. That's not what we have here in America. You know, the institutions that make that possible are just not here because we let them be destroyed. So ultimately, you know, the duopoly has to come to an end. And I think we really need to challenge that and be, be basically brave, be determined to break it by any means necessary and to get what you want by any means necessary. Because when you're not doing that, you're no longer leveraging the democratic corrective in your favor. You're letting somebody else leverage the duopoly against you or the illusion of choice against you. So, you know, Angela Davis, Eddie Glaude, Adolf Reed, you know, even Juan Gonzalez from Democracy Now!, Paul Jay from The Real News Network, all of MSNBC, I've already said TYT, Sam Cedar, and Tom Hartman, and then like the more neoliberal-like people, um, what's that guy's name on Ring of Fires, and neoliberal, Farron Cousins, you know, sometimes he kind of rides the line, but he's always down with the establishment in the end, complains about it, but in the end, ultimately, they fall in line. And I think at this point, they're really not doing us any service. 